Oh boy. Can't have that song on because it'll get me demonetized. All right. Deep dark hole. All right. Welcome aboard, YouTube. It's Thursday night. Everything's all right. Got a little spookiness from Jay Beatty. I made this right here in my basement on his little pad. Dude is talented and it will not trigger the copyright police at YouTube. Getting pumped for my Crowder session coming up, 8 o'clock, live on YouTube. Check it out. Stephen Crowder, great show. And I think Gavin McInnes is coming on at 9 o'clock. I'm not sure. These guys are horrible with their scheduling and the notifications, but you just got to play it by ear. <clears throat> Excuse me. Welcome to the Jim Fannin Show. We have absolutely nothing planned for you tonight. <clears throat> Excuse me, as far as guests go, but I uh, appreciate you checking it out. I don't think anyone's actually checking it out. Let's see what we got online here. I'm going to take an hour of your time tonight. I'm going to hit a few topics. And I hope I remembered, yes, to make the stream public. <coughs> last <coughs> last week I went live with, excuse me, got a Kermie in my throat. Last week I went live with Ben Wilby and I forgot to turn it on. Uh, I forgot to make it public. Sorry about that. Oh, geez, my head is shiny. It looks like I'm the only one online. That's okay. Content is king, and we're going to bring it to you every every Thursday. Right here. Um, whether I like it or not. So, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell, bing, so you can get all the notifications of every video that comes up. And uh, I appreciate the love so far. It's been great. Uh, I'll get into that a little bit later. I'm going to touch on the first segment. I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm going to try and keep this to 60 minutes. I'll be out of here by 8 o'clock, hopefully. First segment, I'm going to talk about my friend who's suffering some severe depression and is um, wanting to end it all. She's been a friend of mine since high school, actually a good friend of mine's girlfriend back in high school. And uh, she is struggling. I spent some time with her this week. She's given me permission to talk about it and, in fact, might even be willing to come on the show and discuss it anonymously with you guys. Uh, we won't put her on camera, obviously. We'll maybe just do an audio podcast uh, style. <laughs> I'm just looking at myself here. I do a lot of looking down, and my head is shiny. We will have another copy of this uploaded later with these microphones to make it sound good, because you can only hear me from that camera over there, and that's probably not the best audio, but better to have it live than not live at all and at some point i will get to the point where we have the good sound on all the platforms i'm not broadcasting on facebook so we're going to talk about ssr eyes uh serotonin what is it reuptake inhibitors yeah ssr eyes um and the problem with our mental health system. Uh, then we're going to touch on impeachment a little bit, only because I'm just really frustrated by this constant show, it seems like. We'll touch on that. And then um, what is with the liberals, man? I, I don't get them. And I met a girl. I met a girl online in the comments section. <laughs> I'm working on a bit, okay? And, uh, and then we'll touch base with... Uh, my YouTube stuff lately. Some really cool news. Um, and then if we have time, 
Oh, we, we'll hit on. Yeah, we'll have time. We'll hit on the left. So a friend of mine is um, suffer, suffers some uh, mental instability, some depression. Some um, she's just not right some of the times, and so she's on SSRIs, antidepressants, and they seem to work for between two months and two years, and then they just stop working. Um, any of you that have tried these might have some experience with it, and I really appreciate your thoughts and suggestions, anything. Um, so frustrating. She's about my age, a little younger, got a decent life, decent job, nice house. She's, for all intents and purposes, a, a happy person but when her meds wear off or stop working she um she wants to end it she's not just boohoo blah blah she wants to end her existence on this plane i i don't i can't even imagine i've had some bad days where you wonder what it's all about and uh whether or not anyone cares if you're around or not that's normal i think but um she had a plan to end her life and uh, she went to the mental health well she went to the hospital and tried to get herself checked in tried to have herself committed and um, they sent her home they you know she has a, a psychiatrist that she's working with she's on medication and for whatever reason um, they sent her home that's dangerous in my mind, and, and scary. Second time, um, the meds wear off. She wants to end it all and makes another trip down to the hospital trying to get herself committed so she can get some psychiatric help and maybe some new meds. I don't know how you deal with it just to talk to someone, a professional. And they sent her home again. Shocking, really. And so I'm not sure what period of time this was over, but this has all happened just lately. Obviously, her friends and family are quite worried. Uh, her parents are around. Her sister's very close to her. She's a brother as well. And um, when you get to that point, she's actually saying goodbye. She's saying, you know what? Tell them I'm sorry. I just I can't I can't deal with this anymore. I can't go on and you know this this war to get her head right with the medical system is exhausting. So over her last couple trips to the hospital, well, she realized that she, uh, although she had a plan, which is part of the equation for uh, being committed to this to the psych ward. She didn't have a date, so um, the third trip down there, she was committed to being committed to getting herself committed at, at uh, the mental health ward at our brand new hospital here in St. Catharines. Maybe that's part of the problem. She should have went out of the Niagara Health System. I don't know if it's any better anywhere else, but Niagara obviously has got some issues as far as treating people with mental illness. We have um, an epidemic of people jumping off the Burgoyne Bridge, although it's very seldom reported. I, I don't know how many have jumped lately there off that uh, $100 million bridge. It's a whole other story. It doesn't really have anything to do with what we're talking about. Uh, but many people are jumping off that bridge, and it's uh, it's... We have a mental health crisis in Niagara. So she lied to them and told them that she didn't plan on making it through the weekend. And so they admitted her. And uh, she was in there for, I don't know, a week or so. While well, they ran some tests, I don't know, changed her meds. They did switch her meds. And... Um, Apparently, she's a candidate for ECT, which I believe is another name for electroshock therapy. 
I think it's or maybe ACT um, convulsion therapy either way so they put you under and then they strap your cranium with electrodes and um, they shock you into convulsions into a seizure and then bring you out of it and you do that three times a week so I'm shocked when she's telling me the story she's telling me from the standpoint of it's her only choice uh, it's a, a chance for her to be normal and this is not a permanent fix by any means but I just cannot wrap my head around this type of drastic barbaric sounding well, therapy now she wants her life back. She said to me that she feels like she's 10% of who she was and she doesn't know where the other 90% went. <sighs> she says she's just not right now. I joked with her that you know, I never really considered her to be all that right in the first place. And she's got a great sense of humor. So, but I called her the other day because I'm confused and I'm worried. And I don't have answers and I have a lot of questions. So I find that when I'm processing something, it seems to come off my tongue quite a lot. I end up talking about it to people that I care about. And I don't know, trying to get feedback or testing theories on myself or I don't know. But I think we're all the same when we're feeling something. We need to... Uh, talk it out and uh, process it so I've been talking to many people about it and then I started to think to my and in fact I did a little uh, Facebook live the other day when I was calling when I got called out by my friend Robbie who basically wanted to beat me up online said come on let's go and I came out here and I said well let's go and then he disappeared and he wants to be on the show but if you want to be on the show Treating me like an a-hole and being um, an a-hole yourself probably isn't the best way to go around it. But I just happened to be ranting the other day, and it, it came out. I just uh, shared it on my stream. And then I've been talking to many people about it. Uh, my men's group today, I threw it up on the table for my boys to discuss and, and uh, give me some feedback and offer some uh, some help in whatever way and my men's group is a place where you can share stuff like that and, and get feedback on it so I'm grateful for them anyways I found myself questioning whether or not she wanted me to talk about it and I figured that it was okay because she's anonymous it's not like I'm identifying her but I just thought you know what I'm gonna call her and make sure that this is okay and it is okay and I probably come back to this and touch on it and give you an update on it as we go through but she's scheduled in some some a couple of weeks from now in February sometime to enter this program of three times a week getting forced into a seizure I don't even like going unconscious forget getting forced into a seizure but uh so she said no problem and she would she's considering whether or not to come on the show and actually talk about it because it occurs for me that what I do here is usually about other people and and I only can hope that anyone that's watching something like this is getting something out of it and um, or they've been there and they can offer me some help or her some help or us some help and so I'm like, you know what? This could be really beneficial for someone that's struggling with exactly what would be. <laughs> You're certainly not the only one. And maybe, maybe your story could touch someone deeply and actually make a difference for them. I can only hope. So I asked her if she wanted to come on the show, and I told her that we could uh, hide her, her image and do it off camera we could just do an audio podcast or point the camera over at the fireplace and and just do that instead of you know being pointed on us i don't really like the video aspect of it i'm a radio guy i have been for a long time since 1220 chsc back i don't know when was that 
early 2000s. My first radio show. And uh, it was the uh, real estate show back then. But uh, So I grew up in radio and I, I'm kind of partial to it. And although even when I was on the radio, I always wanted to have the webcam, you know, so you could see. I think I prefer listening to my own shows without watching it now some shows you need to watch because there's a video element to it but when you're just listening to a guy like i don't know tim pool or something like that which is just opinions and uh i listen to lectures online as well you don't really need to see the people and i prefer that you don't see me either so i told her we come on and we could point the cameras towards the fireplace and and just do a show like that but um Man, I, I'm I'm bent, and it appears that we have a mental health crisis in Niagara that I wasn't really in tune with. And as I started to pour my heart out the other day on Facebook, a friend of mine chirped in with a private message about uh, there's wait times for psychiatrists in Welland that are hundreds deep. How long does it take you to get to see a mental health professional? And what is our problem? Why isn't anyone stepping up to the plate here as far as, you know, servicing the area? Or are all our psychiatrists dying out because of age? You'd think that the Niagara region would be a place that, you know, doctors would want to come and relocate. And, you know, their housing's pretty cheap. Excuse me. I seem to have a little bit of a runny nose. Sorry about that. And, um... So I, I don't understand it, and I'm hoping that maybe somebody could shed some light on it or may, even better, um, offer some assistance, some advice, or support in some way. I don't know. Uh, this is my coffee from men's group today. <laughs> Still kicking it. My coffee gets me jacked up, boy. So, I mean, there's many complicating and compounding issues as far as mental health goes you know um i'm not sure that we're even addressing the root causes of mental illness uh, i know some of it's hereditary and could be related to nutrition can you believe that not getting your the correct efas in your diet i know that can be a huge thing essential fatty acids eat your hemp oil obviously um <coughs> upbringing and your lineage some of this stuff could be hereditary for sure um and drug abuse of course for some people uh comes into it alcoholism hopelessness uh, <laughs> from unemployment i don't know from broken down communities from addiction to social media and other things and we, man we just don't see our neighbors anymore we don't have strong communities anymore but it just goes to show you that um, this is a story of a woman that's got her act together she has a job and a pet and a nice house and a good car and she's got money she seems to have no pressing issues personally She's just struggling with her uh, her mental capacity and her chemical imbalance. And, and uh, although I know me mental illness and addiction seems to run a little bit more rampant in men, obviously women, especially of my age now that, you know, hormones are up and down. They have one in puberty and one in midlife and one later in life. I, I don't know, but uh, wow, it's just... I don't get it, and I am I'm, I'm confused and looking for answers, and man, I just don't want to lose. She's a good friend, and I don't want to lose her. But it just goes to show you how your life might be fine, and you still find yourself feeling hopeless and wanting to end it all. I know if you use the the S word for lack of a better term because well YouTube take you down for talking about anything but maybe they'll take me down anyways 
this is probably not content that is suitable for advertisers, but saying certain words gets uh, gets the sensors triggered. So yeah, you could have a great life and then still find yourself wanting to end it all and get get off this plane. And uh, I want to be understanding. I want to be empathic. I want to be supportive. You know and. I once had a girlfriend of mine that was so jealous of my friends that she routinely made fun and mocked. She was a girl that struggled with her own mental health. Maybe that had something to do with it, but just mocked me for having friends like this and this specific one. I've never seen a specialist ever say anything when you're dealing with NPD or narcissistic personality disorder, narc as I call them. The only advice I've ever seen is run, get out. So it's 721 on a beautiful Thursday evening. Coming up for me, Stephen Crowder at 8 o'clock on YouTube. Check him out. A well-produced show. Uh, some good skits. And uh, he's funny. He's a comedian. And uh, quite the actor, too. Good impressionist. Um, his staff and, and sidekicks aren't as great as they used to be. I used to love Sven the Computer. And uh, not gay Jared, but his crew is not too bad. So check, and, and I watch it. He's first time back since the Christmas break. Another guy that's really struggled with depression and mental health and uh, works very hard. And uh, you can expect thirty or 40,000 people watching him live. And uh, I think he's got about 4 million subs. So check him out. And then if you're not a subscriber to Gavin McInnes, you can't watch him tonight. But tonight is the night that he do he does goes live with Get Off My Lawn Live. Gavin McInnes is one of the funniest guys in the business right now. Nancy Pelosi walked the impeachment articles over to the Senate yesterday, was it? After sitting on them for weeks and stalling. Uh, what was the purpose of stalling? I, I mean, it had to be political. I, I know what the official word was. That they were looking for a fair trial. Well, the, the Democrats don't control the Senate. The Republicans do, and you can bet that they're going to have. They're going to throw this thing out. At the very least, acquit uh, Trump. But I think Trump wants a trial. He wants to pull all these witnesses up, and I think that it'd be wildly entertaining. I don't completely understand the American system, but I'm understanding more and more of it all the time. I didn't look south of the border for my political fix or my addiction, my, uh, to satisfy my political addiction, until Trump. Trump is the only reason I am interested in American politics, and I think it's fascinating now. <coughs> Excuse me, from the Senate <coughs> to the House to the White House, to, you know. I, I find it fascinating. So I, I don't know exactly why Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, held on to these articles of impeachment. Th there was a huge rush to get this done before Christmas. Time, time, time. That's all I heard her talking about. Even recently, she was told, uh, she. <laughs> I think Nancy Pelosi is not mentally well. She does not string together sentences well. Her and Joe Biden, can you imagine her and Joe Biden <laughs> running? <laughs> For president and vice president, and you put one or the other at the top or in the second man. Well, they're Bernie Sanders. I mean, the Democrats don't have any candidates that can beat Trump. You can't take these people seriously. Joe Biden is a freaking joke. Bernie is just straight socialist. Bernie, I mean, I would have voted for Bernie the second time around, I would have probably voted for him in 2016. Because I was still that much of a lefty and an anti-establishment guy. But Trump certainly seems to be an anti-establishment guy these days. So so why hold on to the articles? Uh, to push back the trial? And why? To take Bernie? Like, I mean, it really seems like the DNC is just stacked against Bernie Sanders. They, they were last time around with Clinton. They favored her for whatever reason. CNN, same thing. You know, CNN said the other night on the Democratic uh, presidential debate 
uh, whoever answered, uh, whoever asked Bernie the question, he, they said, uh, did you ever t tell Elizabeth Warren that a woman could never win? And he said, no. And then immediately after that, they went to Elizabeth Warren and said, Elizabeth, how did you feel when Bernie Sanders said <laughs> that a woman could never win? <laughs> like, talk about bias, just in, insufferable. And so obviously biased towards one candidate and against uh, the Republicans. Uh, it was, uh, I just heard the moment replayed and it's shocking how they can ask Bernie Sanders one question. He answers it, no. And I believe him. He might have said something like that she twisted or heard. You know, it's funny how uh, when people say something, sometimes you hear them say something else, especially if you have a biased or an already always listening. But yeah, they asked him. He denied it. He said, no, I believe him. And then they went straight to Elizabeth Warren and said, how did you feel when he said that to you? I disagreed. Whatever the answer was. Oh, wow. And CNN is screwing Bernie hard, just like they did last time in favor of Hillary Clinton. And how did that work out for you, CNN? You ended up with Trump. What are you going to end up with this time? Well, Trump's, hey, he's a shoe in I don't even think it's going to be a contest. So, uh, um, you know, Pelosi shushed members in the House when they announced that the impeachment was coming. Shh. She shushed him, gave her the gave everyone the hairy eyeball, you know, that dirty look like because it was supposed to be a solemn event. Nothing to be celebrating. And uh, uh then when she signed the documents, I guess the articles, that were to be delivered to the Senate, she signed them with I don't know, twenty or thirty black and gold Nancy Pelosi pens that were served up literally on silver platters and she'd make one letter and then change pens and make another letter big smile on her face meant another pen it was it was frightening to watch how she was turning the pens over keeping track of which ones she had used and just making a little like this and taking another pen off the tray and signing like that and another pen it was the clunkiest thing I'd ever seen and I didn't know why this had to be so celebratory and so ceremonial when all she's been telling us is this is a solemn occasion <laughs> this is not entertainment well she made it pretty entertaining don't you think but that that's not it After she shushed him in the house when the announcement came down, and then after she signed these articles of impeachment to be delivered to the Senate with 45 pens, gold and black, Nancy Pelosi embroidered pens, probably left over from the last campaign. I don't know. Maybe she's got a stack of them that she gives out. Awkward. Then she took selfies. Big smiles. Happy, happy, happy. And then she gave the pens out as souvenirs to her friends and members of Congress. And <laughs> I don't get it. Meanwhile, we have an opioid crisis that's killing our youth. We have an immigration problem on all our borders. I mean, if we're talking in the States, we can say the same about Canada. Canada's got a leaky border as well. Hundreds of thousands of Illegal immigrants come across the illegally at, you know, points that are not considered official points, uh, checkpoints, every year in the States. I think I think they're close to 100,000 illegal immigrants every month. I can check that, but I'm pretty sure it's close to that. Anyway, she signed these uh, articles of impeachment that she's been holding on to for weeks and weeks and weeks after being after telling us this is a huge rush, this is time of 
is of the essence. We need to get this done before Christmas. Before and then they went on break for three or four weeks and they held on to the articles of impeachment. I don't get it. I don't understand. But there's some talk that the 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 DNC has actually got it in for Bernie uh, because um, if well he has to come off the road. He has to come off the campaign trail if he wants to be a juror, which he I think it's mandatory that he has to uh, appear in the Senate. So that's going to take him off the trail. And if Joe Biden gets called as a witness, he'll be off the trail too. But I think the slant is towards Elizabeth Warren and Joe Biden. And wow, this is the craziest, craziest thing. And I just can't get it in through my head that the Democrats are still fighting about who's going to be their candidate. Meanwhile, Trump is steamrolling his campaign. He's raised a billion dollars almost. Not quite a billion dollars, but he's raising huge, huge coin. Records setting all the time for how much money he's every quarter he's setting a new record for the RNC as far as uh, fundraising for the campaign. So he's locked in as the candidate. And is this, I really truly don't understand this and I haven't researched it enough. And I, I mean, I guess I could, but I'm asking you, like, is this how it goes every time around? The sitting president is a lock and then the opposition's got a jockey until July. Like, the election's in November. Trump's been campaigning for a year and raising money. And these guys are still beating the hell out of each other. Like, literally. You know, you saw them on stage the other day. Elizabeth Warren went to shake, or, or, or Bernie. There's nothing more pathetic than an individual, a human being. That uh, will not shake an outstretched hand. Disgusting. So Bernie, they're on stage after the debate. Bernie puts out his hand. Elizabeth Warren pulls her back. Psych. Pulls her hand back. And then CNN drops the dead mic audio. <laughs> Obviously everything's mic'd. I think this was completely staged. And Elizabeth Warren says to Bernie, did you call me a liar on national television? Pardon? Did you call me a liar on national television? You know what I would have said if I was Bernie? Yeah. Fuck, you lied about being Indian. You lied just about anything. And in fact, you should hear what I say about you when you turn your back, you dumb. <laughs> so, uh, I just, I, I don't understand how these the the Democratic Party are killing each other as far as candidates go. Absolutely murdering each other on stage. And then you hear, you know, the Warren campaign release something saying, oh, well, Bernie told me a woman could never win. Listen, Bernie's about the most intersectional guy you know, the most feminist, left-wing, whack job you've ever met. I like Bernie Sanders. I just don't like his politics too much, and I think he's gone further left than he needs to be. In fact, it would make sense for them to get a little bit more center right or center left if they want to win. But, of course, the uh, Elizabeth Warren campaign drops. Mm, yeah, Bernie told me I could never win. And that makes news. And then this little stunt after the uh, debate. And... Uh, And then she refuses to shake her hand, and then the audio gets dropped that she's calling him out for calling her a liar. Well, you are a liar, Elizabeth. You're scum. You are <laughs> you lied about being Cherokee to get a job. <sighs> lie, 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 lie. Like, well, what a pathetic human being. And nice sweater. It's not because you're a woman. And take Kamala Harris over. Liz Warren and Kamala Harris is not much better. Well, she did a beautiful job out in California. Eh? So I just don't understand how the Democrats can beat the hell out of each other leading up to their. I mean, I don't think they're choosing a leader until July. July. That's four months before the election, five tops. 
Meanwhile, Trump is cruising. And I don't see how that does anything but leave the opposition with a huge, huge um, disadvantage. And if that's the way it works all the time, then okay, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. You know, Trump's been campaigning for over a year, and these guys don't even have a candidate yet for campaigning. They, I mean, how can you raise money without a presidential candidate? Strange. So I, um, I don't. I don't, I don't get it. Maybe you guys can fill me in. Uh, And she, you know, going back to Pelosi, she announced her managers for this uh, impeachment trial in the Senate. And all the managers, almost all the managers that she announced or appointed were supportive of impeachment before this so-called whistleblower that had no firsthand knowledge, only third-hand knowledge, whatever came about and you can't say the name of this whistleblower again that only brought hearsay without getting um, censored from Facebook YouTube and Twitter as soon as you put his name up it seems like they take it down so these managers that she announced were uh, in favor of impeachment before this so-called whistleblower came out and you know this whole thing started about Ukraine but we had a thorough investigation into the Ukraine yeah or some language that wasn't perfect but this is the first time that a president's been impeached for not uh, like not committing a criminal act because it's democratic uh, controlled house house of representatives I am no expert but this reeks and um Anyways, uh, I hope that we see a long, drawn-out trial with lots of witnesses that get absolutely grilled because the Democrats, Adam Schiff for one, is a shady as shit. Pelosi, I, I don't think she's right mentally. In fact, if she was a boozer, I wouldn't be surprised if she had a problem with booze. And God, please... Somebody do something about those dentures. Like my, I can't. <laughs> she can't keep her teeth in her head. I'm sure of it. The left has gone completely mad. And I shouldn't say the left. I should say the far left. I should start to wrap this up. 7.38 is on your clock. It is a beautiful Thursday evening. Getting wound up for Crowder. And Gavin McInnes. Thursdays are my favorite days for watching stuff. (laughs) So, yeah, I mean the far left. I don't mean liberals because liberals and conservatives have many shared values of, you know, the 90% of us, 95% of us that find ourselves in the moderate middle. Um have many shared values on all kinds of issues and that's what's really kind of confusing and distressing for me because I kind of decided a couple of years ago like why are we so polarized yes yeah, definitely we're polarized men and women and left and right politically but it took me a while to figure out that it's only the extreme and I only hear the extreme left. I don't hear the alt-right. I don't see the alt-right. Yeah, you got the Tiki Torch guys and fuck the KKK has been dissolved into nothing. I still say that the alt-right people out there, the hard-right bigots and racists, you could probably fit in your average Starbucks. But these radical lefties, man, they are out of their damn minds but they're on the extreme far left and I do not confuse them with the moderate middle and the liberals that are in the middle that are reasonable people and they have the 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 extremists on the far left have the loudest voices and I guess Twitter and social media gives them a platform and they're out of their minds and we hear very little from the alt-right but the Antifa these masked cowards that are perpetuating violence have nothing but hate it seems and they hate themselves you know white liberals actually the only group of people that have a bias against themselves many studies have shown 
that they prefer everyone else's company about their own. <laughs> These mass cowers, and, and they have, not only do they have nothing but hate, but they really have no solutions, and everything boils down to violence. Even I had a friend of mine over the other day, I won't say who it was, but it could have been a relative, who sat with me, and all I did was say that I find Trump more entertaining every day. Every day he grows on me a little bit more. And this person stood up and was about to leave and said, I want to hit you. I want to punch you. Now, this person wouldn't stand a chance with me. <laughs> he pulled a punch. But can you believe, and this is the typical response that you get from so many on the left. They are enraged to the point where you can't even be a Donald Trump supporter or voter without being fired, beat up. It's just, it's, it's crazy. And the lefties, they hate the police. There's constantly, you see them with their masks and their bats, and they're constantly saying, fuck the pigs, fuck the pigs. In fact, when they ambushed the Proud Boys, who basically is was a drinking group Gavin McInnes started for a bunch of you know married Christian men for the most part conservative married Christian men with families they started doing security details for some of the conservative speakers that were getting threatened at their um, at their functions it's the only the left that shuts down free speech and says that you can't speak here Ben Shapiro same thing they protest Crowder um, Jordan Peterson <laughs> Jordan Peterson, a, a clinical psychologist, a professor at the U of T. Well, he hasn't he hasn't taught in a long time, and a bright guy, and seems to only want the best for people. The left wants to shut him down. The left believes that, believes that speech is violence. Words are not violence. I don't care what you say. You should have the right to say anything. There should, there is no hate speech for me. But they just per continually perpetuate these false narratives. False narratives like white cops are killing black people indiscriminately and disproportionately. Not true. Black Lives Matter. It was formed on a lie. Thank you very little, Colin Kaepernick. You tool. You know, I just, I don't get it. Gender pay gap. Duh. That's been debunked so many times. Um... They tolerate abortion even after death or after birth. I mean, you have the, the governor of Virginia, was it, on a talk show? Now, has he come out and, and disavowed what he said or backtracked what he said? I don't think so. What happens when a child survives an abortion? Well, we keep it comfortable. And then between the doctors and the family, we decide what we're going to do with it. Uh, I says a pardon. You decide what you're going to do with it. Well, that means that you can kill it after it's born? These late-term abortions, I'm not down with. I don't think that we're ever gonna gonna outlaw abortion. That's not what I'm looking to do. The the horse is out of the barn on that one. But I cannot believe that society lets you abort a six, a five month, a six month, a seven, eight month, a nine month old child, human being, fetus. There's no laws against it in Canada now. The doctors say, oh, yeah, we'll find a doctor to do that. Mm. Well, they did it in the States, got a hidden camera, eight-month-old. A woman, Planned Parenthood, hidden camera, face blurred, talking to her. Yep, she's got two kids at home. Her husband doesn't want her to have the abortion. She goes ahead and has one anyway. How do you explain that one when you're out to here and then you come home and you're not pregnant anymore? <laughs> I know it's not my business. No uterus, no opinion. That's bullshit. But <sighs> They hate themselves. And they want communism for everyone. No border, no wall, no USA at all. Just let everyone come in. <coughs> we don't need a country. We don't need ICE. We don't need an immigration service. We don't need police. We don't need jails. Just let everyone free. You have all the illegal aliens, um, free health care, food stamps, welfare. Give it all to them. I just don't get it. 
Who's going to pay for all this? No border, no wall, no USA at all. You know, illegal immigration is down under Trump. I think that's a good thing. But if you take a stand against illegal immigration, people coming across the border with points of entry that are not designed to accept them, you're a racist bigot. I don't want illegal anything. But illegal immigration, you're not getting the best and brightest. If they're sneaking across the border, you're getting their shit. You're getting the rapists and the drug addicts and the drug wheelers and, and traffickers and pimps. and You think the doctors are coming across illegally? No. Fuck. But uh, the media seems to have an unmistakable bias against Trump. Trump, you know, it's the orange man bad on CNN all the time, MSNBC. I don't watch the stations once. I turn on CNN every once in a while just to see what they're talking about, and they're talking about Trump 24-7. I wonder if they even understand that they're operating as Trump's personal PR firm. This is a commercial, a nonstop 24-7 commercial for Trump. Like, you know the idea there's no such bad thing as PR? There's no such thing as bad PR, sorry. It's true. When you talk about Trump, 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 it's just building the brand. I don't care if you're saying bad things about him all the time, mostly which aren't true. You're just giving him a huge commercial. It's unbelievable, and they don't get it. Here, you want to water down Trump's influence? Stop talking about him. <laughs> you think somebody would get it, man. I don't understand the far left. Speech is violence. They want to limit your speech. They want people to shut. They want to shut down conservative talking people that are not hateful bigots. They're just conservatives. They want to take your guns from you. Now, limiting speech and taking your guns happened in another part of the world, in a country called Germany, before something really bad happened. Yeah, I don't want that to go down. Cinnamon in my coffee tastes great. So they want to take your guns. They want to limit your speech. And they want um, men to compete with women in sports. MMA. Track and field. See, men are faster, stronger, and bigger than women. Newsflash. This just in. <laughs> because they're designed to hunt animals to feed the women and take care of them. They're protectors. I mean, for the most part, obviously, you find some women that are stronger than some men. But for the most part, upper body strength with men, hugely different than with women. All of it. Otherwise, if there wasn't a difference, we would let them compete with no risk with men. They'd play in the NFL. They'd compete as one class in the Olympics. We wouldn't have divisions. We don't need them because we're equal, right? No, we're not. Who is it? Uh, Fox? What's her name? Something Fox. Anyways, MMA fighter, I'm pretty sure. Smash some poor girl's cranium because she identifies as a woman now. So she's competing in MMA as a woman. She's been a man her whole life. <laughs> I have no problem calling you Cindy if you're a once Sid. No problem with you even having your parts changed but not before puberty can't get a tattoo you can't drink smoke be drafted even enlist in the in the military can't vote but if you tell your parents you're a girl then they have to take you immediately to not a psychiatrist but a doctor for gender reassignment to start the transition to put you on puberty blockers before you've gone through a natural puberty. Like, I just don't get the laugh these days. Can we please leave the kids alone? Can we please just let them be kids until the point that they can make a rational adult decision for themselves about their sexuality? I can't imagine anything worse than looking down. I identify very well with my sexual parts. I'm pretty cis hetero. Is that what they call it? Heterosexual, I'm, yeah, I love my gay friends. I don't have a lot of them. I think they're fucking hilarious. I could care less 
who they choose to love or have sex with. It really couldn't. Now, it's not for me. I find it funny, too, if you say, you know what? I'm not into the transgender people. Like, I don't want to date a woman that used to be a man. Call me fucking crazy. <laughs> I can't, ex you know, I don't want to get down there and find the wrong junk. <laughs> or junk that looks like mine because I don't get in. That's not my thing. <laughs> but if you say that, you're transphobic. No, I don't even like certain races of women. They just don't do anything for me. And some races are like, wow. Well, it's just a proclivity, a natural proclivity and attraction that I have. I don't like super tall women. I don't want to look down at the bend and see feet that are bigger than mine, okay? <laughs> What's that mean? What do you call somebody who discriminates against big feet? <laughs> I don't even know. I'll find it for you. I'll put it in the comments later. <laughs> yeah, can we let the kids be kids and let them grow through puberty naturally? Because here's the thing. Transgenderism has a high desisting uh, a ratio of desisting. A, a very high ratio of desisting. That means they go through the transition and then when they're old enough, when they become adults, they desist. They go back and they usually they end up being gay so sexual confusion is something we all go through in adolescence and if you're gay I guess maybe there could be more of that for you because you know you're growing up in a society that's mostly hetero I could see how if you if you're gay and you're not quite sure and society doesn't you know open well I mean we openly accept it but it's not it doesn't seem it's not the I don't want to say normal the most common thing What's the percentage of gay people? It's got to be under 10%. And I know transgenderism is under 1%. So here we're going to put men, biological men, in bathrooms, change rooms, prisons, and sports with biological women. Where's the protection? Rape shelters. We're going to let men who could be previous offenders in the same shelters with women where they're supposed to be protected and you don't get how a woman goes I don't want her here I'm trying to get away from that wow 7.53 on a beautiful Thursday night just ranting blowing off some steam uh, we do not live in a rape culture and we do not suppress oppress women and minorities it's 2020 that's not we're not down with that so these false narratives are huge i, I don't uh, i don't get it okay wrapping up uh youtube channel uh youtube.com slash jim fanner you're probably watching it right here right now i appreciate that and uh wow i got a nice picture my head's kind of shiny today i promise to come back with better sound uh and we'll upload a better copy of this with better sound monetized overnight uh this channel's 10 years old uh i've only started working it the last couple years N not very seriously until the last maybe six months i've been working a little bit more seriously i never thought you know i worked for eight years i was at 50 subs subscribers for those of you that don't know the lingo i was talking to a buddy about it today and he's like what's a sub well, subscribers so i worked my way up after eight years to about 200 subs and now um overnight it doubled and tripled well it tripled overnight uh, one day i looked down in my i've gone from 229 to 560 something i'm like it must be a mistake i logged off i came back and i'm like what the where like that doesn't ever happen it never happened before and then i started working it i had a really well for me a pretty successful video compared to the rest of the ones that i had it did you know it became my number one video pretty much overnight and this other one that I had there I had that a number of views on it and I'd had it there for months and months and months next thing you know I'm monetized I'm over a thousand subs my 4,000 watch hours was attained and now um, wow I'm at 3,500 subs now which for me is oh, very impressive it took a few weeks to get my live streaming privileges back I um 
but it took a while for YouTube to get them um, to me. I've got the community posts, and I can do the live streaming now, but it took about three weeks to get it up and running. And then I could just continue to relentlessly post content, steal some content here and there that's not copyrighted, even the, some copyrighted stuff where it's not monetizable, but at least it, it, got, it gained me some traffic, and then my, my subs just kept going up and up and up and up and up. <clears throat> so I've been uh, creatively building the YouTube channel. I got my first check this week. Last week wasn't deposited into my bank account. It wasn't a very big one, but now I'm on track to get a, actually a decent sized check for the second month. Uh, I was the first month of monetization. I was over 1 million watch minutes. I know minutes, you can go seconds or whatever, but they, they rank it in watch minutes for a reason. I was like looking down, like this is the guys at church in the video production booth. I'm like at 800,000 video watch minutes that's a lot and then I broke it in the first month I went to 1.1 million watch minutes and this month's only half over I'm at 1.6 million watch minutes I've got three videos over a hundred thousand I have one approaching 200,000 views right now and just today my channel broke a million views I'm like now, most of it is in the last couple months, so this is all new for me, but a million of anything is a lot. Now, I don't have a video that's got a million views on it, but just today, <clears throat> excuse me, got to curve me in my throat, and I got to get out of here because Crowder's coming up soon. One million video views. So thank you for the love. I can't tell you anything about how I got there. Oh, I can tell you a little bit, but there's no how-to here because I'm just kind of bumbling along like an idiot and got lucky and have been kind of smart and creative. And um, hey, interviews with Tucker Carlson at the right time with good guests apparently get you many video views. It's 7.57 and a beautiful Thursday night. I appreciate your time. Thanks for checking us out. I am Jim Fannin. The content, uh, content, the contact is below in every video. You can see real estate at Team Niagara as an email to get me. By the way, I'm a real estate agent, a hungry one, and I'm certainly looking to get your business because uh, I haven't been doing a whole lot lately as far as real estate goes. I just lost a job with a huge coach. I didn't lose anything. I made it to the fifth interview in a, in a big coaching firm out of California. And yesterday I got notified that they're proceeding um, without me. Uh, bombed out, dude. Like I thought I had a real shot. And it would be coaching agents. So... Um, I don't know why I went there, but uh, just uh, blathering along. Uh, Jay Beatty is the author of this track right here. It's called The Deep Dark Hole. Thanks for watching. We'll talk soon. Peace out, yo.